Intel launched the first wave of 12th gen core CPUs in November. Boasting a new hybrid architecture with a mixture of P cores and E cores, the new CPUs codenamed Alder Lake set new performance records and were aggressively priced too. Even so, the first CPUs out the door were of the K variety, Intel's premium processors, so they were hardly cheap. But now Intel is fleshing out the range with a huge variety of non-K CPUs, plus three new chipsets, making it a whole lot cheaper to upgrade to 12th gen. This new range isn't entirely straightforward though, so make sure to keep watching to find out how to pick the right CPU and motherboard. As you'd expect, there are premium Core i9, high-end Core i7, mid-range Core i5 and entry-level Core i3 12th gen CPUs in this second wave. But what you might not have expected is that also some entry-level Pentium and Celeron CPUs as well. And whilst these aren't much to get excited about, it's good to see Intel using its latest architecture throughout the stack. There are two new Core i9s to choose from, the standard 12900 and an F model without integrated graphics. Both of these have the same overall configuration and provide a cheaper and lower power alternative to the flagship 12900K at the cost of a significantly lower base clock. Let us know in the comments below whether you think this is a good compromise and which 12th gen Core i9 you'd pick. There are also a pair of new Core i7s, a 12700 and again an F model without integrated graphics. Once again, these are considerably cheaper than the 12700K but run at a much lower base clock. The range of 12th gen Core i5s gets a whole lot more interesting with four new CPUs added to the stack. And this is because whilst the first two models from the first wave, the 12600K and the 12600K F have six P cores and four E cores, the four CPUs from the second wave don't have any E cores. Now, whilst this change won't make an appreciable difference when gaming, the E cores make a massive difference when multitasking or content creating. So we're not sure that these four e coreless CPUs really do qualify as Core i5s. Should Intel have come clean and branded them as Core i4? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Intel has also added some entry-level Core i3s to the 12th gen range for the first time. And whilst these only have four P cores and no E cores, they should still be a significant upgrade from older Core i3s as Alder Lake includes massively improved IPC as well as superior I.O. In addition to all these new CPUs, Intel has also added three new chipsets to the range, providing you with several more affordable options to the original flagship Z690 chipset. As is usual, the real-world differences between the various chipsets is relatively minor, with all four models providing almost identical performance. The only difference we can spot is that the H610 entry-level chipset doesn't support PCIe 4 SSDs, although we don't see this as a problem as it wouldn't make sense to use such an expensive SSD in an entry-level PC in the first place. Then as you step down the range, the chipsets offer progressively less I.O. So if you have a ton of PCIe cards, PCIe SSDs, SATA drives and USB devices, make sure to choose the appropriate chipset. So there you have it, everything you need to know about the massive new range of Intel 12th Gen Core CPUs and the trio of new motherboard chipsets. Make sure to head over to the scanner website to check out the new range of 12th Gen components. And whilst you're at it, make sure to explore the range of professionally built 3XS systems. Before you do though, let us know in the comments below which CPU and chipset you're most interested in and why. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.